Welcome, I'm Siwa Pili, Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, as you can tell, we're not on the set. I'm gonna take my mask off because I'm vaccinated. Hope you are too. But uh, we are in Richmond at the Richmond Art Center, and we're here for the uh, opening of the Leonard Peltier statue. And my guest today, well, one of my guests today is Kathy Peltier. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. And it's so good to see you. It's it been is. a long, long time. Yes, it's like a every, long time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone else, we keep in touch on Facebook, huh? <laughs> right, yeah. And plus, she makes beautiful jewelry. <laughs> I just happen to be wearing, <laughs> but um, so the the uh, this is the opening here in Richmond, the first day. And when was it first unveiled? In D.C., Washington D.C. In Washington D.C. Was it at the museum there? Probably. Uh, American huh. Indian Muse uh, American Indian yeah, Museum. Yeah, the museum. Yeah. Have you ever been there? It's wonderful. It's just amazing. It's an amazing museum. So, mm -hmm. so tell me, Kathy, what was it like? being Leonard Peltier's daughter? Tough. <laughs> you know, they say you walk in a mile in someone's moccasins. You know, um, it was very tough growing up because when people don't research and they don't know the story, they would always immediately think my dad was just a killer. And I'm like, no, you got to mm -hmm. understand. It was an occupation that happened that my dad was there protecting. He is not a killer. So in that sense, it was very tough because I always had to, don't want to be a bad person, say, but I used to always get in fights because of my dad. And um, so it was very, it was very tough. So kind of. was it other kids that they just didn't know the history? I think mainly it was the parents who told uh, their oh. kids and so then they her just, father's in jail and he killed somebody that right. kind of thing basically oh, yeah terrible. and I lived on the Navajo reservation so that was very tough not only being light skin it but you know it was very tough just being able to be like you know just say point out that Leonard Peltier's daughter and her dad killed people oh wow yeah terrible. so that was very tough and I mean, you like, weren't really raised around him no I wasn't I was actually two years well, about two years old when I was first handed my dad in the Fargo, North Dakota, in the um, in a courtroom, and my dad wanted to see me, and he they passed him along, passed me along to the security guard, handed him to my dad. It was like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now back to the, yeah. So he barely got to see me, and I know he missed out on. Him other his sure. other kids but uh -huh. I'm the baby of the whole family uh -huh. so as far as I know <laughs> <laughs> now did, have you seen him any other times over the years yes the last time I saw him was in 2018 or was it 19 I just remember the first time I went to go see him um, something went wrong and I was denied access to see him <sighs> So I, I was like, okay, let me try another three months later. So um, I had people helping me and I, I just felt really guilty of people donating to me because I'm like, what if I get denied again? I'm gonna be crushed. <laughs> so- um, I'm sure it was harder on you than other people. So that's why I started doing, we started, well, me and my mom, we started doing beadwork. Like this is one of the things we did beautiful. and uh, that. And my beautiful earrings. Yeah, and we were, we wanted to honor my dad in a way and, um, and we only did limited edition of that. I think we only have like two left, two pairs left. Wow. And, um, yeah. but the second time I got to see my dad and I was like, we were like, it was very strange because being in prison for over 40 years was very hard for him to relate to me from me yeah. coming in and then not realizing this was the saddest part. <clears throat> As we were saying goodbye, he held out his hand like this. Yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? I'm yeah. your daughter. Yeah. I mean, have, you know, let's have a hug. Yeah. And I believe that was 2019 actually, because I remember COVID happened. And, right. and then I tried right. to go see him just this past few months. And because of COVID, there was lack of staff. Mm -hmm. And, but that's as recent as I can get. And I'm thinking I'm gonna have to wait a little longer until the COVID's 
more or less controlled or right because they open and close everything yes. so quickly and I know you were so excited this last time too yeah and I was fall and disappointed yeah very disappointed because they were on lockdown and because of lack of staff um, and I was like I wanted to see my dad on Mother's Day <laughs> you know but it didn't happen and very disappointed I didn't know how to tell the Facebook world like I didn't get to see my dad and I just felt really guilty and oh I don't think you should have I think it was probably worse for you than anyone else I mean having to go through that and the anticipation of seeing him and the disappointment I mean and then I guess as supporters of his um, you know we all we prayed every time there was a new president mm -hmm. that he would be released and been disappointed every single time, and I'm sure you have been too. Oh yeah, definitely. The whole family has, and we so kind of like, more or less, we kind of separate ourselves now because after the Clinton admin and not him being released, after it seemed like it was very promising, we um, we just kind of like separated ourselves now from that because we're like. We can't hold on to that and think that every president might and then get very disappointed so I think we've just become kind of like cold until it really jaded about it now because yeah. you yeah exactly so um but yeah so I mean we we do I mean like it seems like we don't want to people see it almost like we don't want to see our dad free but no we do I mean he's our dad and you know sure. how many years he's missed out on his grandkids he's missing out on his great grandkids now and then how many people don't really recognize his family because they don't know that he has kids because they only see is Leonard Peltier right and uh, when they see people speak out about him, they're, we're like, well, why come we weren't invited? Why weren't we asked to? Oh, absolutely. And so when Rigo, when you, which you'll get to meet soon, he, he has every, had every attempt to me be a part of this. When they opened mm. up in the main museum in Los Angeles, he had me and I was so happy. I was like, uh, it's ecstatic. I was, I got to paint his braid. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was exciting. You know, I was just like, just so happy to be a part of oh, I saw something. pictures of you standing on those feet. Yeah. Those are really big toes. <laughs> <laughs> big toes to fill too. <laughs> So that's an amazing sculpture and yeah. it's a shame that he hasn't seen it no but I did tell him about it because he gets so many letters and um, and people um, and he doesn't get to read them all sometimes and, um, and I told so I told him about it and he was like oh wow he goes tell um, Rico thank you Aww. he goes I really appreciate that so he was grateful for that when I told him about it and I told him what it was and then I've been trying to get pictures but they were so strict on what my dad can have but in um, as you know like no postcards now it has to, it's just letters now I mean handwritten letters and people want to send him things and I'm like you can't I mean you really can't now he's an amazing artist as well yeah. right yeah so does he still do artwork there? Do they allow him to do the artwork? Since the COVID, he's been limited. Oh. Um, he, what he told me is that he has a different space that he has to, he goes to. And so when the lockdown was down, he couldn't really do anything but sit mm -hmm. there. So um, I don't know how it's changed. And that's why I wanted to go see him yeah. to see how much has changed. His health? How's his health? The same aneurysm. Um, I mean, there he could have an aneurysm anytime. Um, it's got to be about 0.5 or 0 0.5 for them to even do anything. So it's less than that. He's always had a locked jaw. And um, is it diabetic? I, yes, he's a diabetic as well, and he takes insulin shots. Mm -hmm. So, um, but he seems to be taking care of that. I mean. He isn't, or maybe I don't know, because I mean, so much you can reveal to a person. Yeah, and he's 77 this year. Yes, today. Oh, today is actually his birthday. Oh. Yes. So well, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow.
So Kathy, do you have a parting message for our youth and how as you know, members of the community, how can we help? Oh, that's a very good question. But first, I wanted to say, um, I wanted to thank the Ohlone tribe for their, who are the co original co-takers co of this land. And the ways to help out my dad right now, um, you can also go to whoisleonardpeltier.info. Don't do org. You'll go on to info, the Info, okay. Yeah, dot info. <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> um, let's see, yeah, and just, um, you can just go ahead and write him a letter, too, not a postcard, no, nothing, don't send him anything else, because they consider just it. Just a nice letter. Bad. Yeah, just a nice letter, letting him know you, you support him, him and his cause, my, da my dad's cause. Oh, good. And, because that was one thing that when I went to go see my dad, he was like, ah, everybody's forgotten me, so what, what do I what do I have to live for? Uh, and I'm like, you are so wrong, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll put his um, address up, too, on the screen so people will have it, and they can also write letters. And, and everyone has a congressperson, a senator in your area, and if you know them personally, talk to them, but definitely send them a letter. I mean, everyone can do that. Send them letters and encourage them to release Leonard. So happy birthday, Leonard, and we'll be back uh, with some more interviews for you. Stay tuned to Native Ways TV. We're here at the Richmond Arts Center in Richmond, of course. Well, I'm here with Rigo. Hi, Rigo. Hi. This is Rigo, the artist, the sculptor, the one who created this masterpiece. So tell me. What was the inspiration? I was shocked by the invisibility that his struggle has to so many people. And then I was also, um, I don't know, you kind of run out of adjectives, but to, in the 20th century, in the 21st century, to see um, what they call a cigar store Indian, you know, to mm -hmm. see a, a wooden caricature made of uh, what would be, the, you know, a leader of a people um, that were genocided, nearly chained to a storefront to advertise cigars. Um, I was so shocked by that that I thought, well, as an artist, maybe the least thing I can do is to make a sculpture out of a native person that has a name, has a history, has an identity, and it's someone that you should know about. So in a way, to me, this is the opposite of a cigar store. I don't even want to say those words, it's kind of, you know, just to repeat them, but my um, motivation was to contribute my two grains of, my two drops of water to this ocean of support that it's amazing. has amazing. worldwide. <clears throat> now, let's look at this piece and uh, take a good look. Well, here in California, I've spent a great deal of time al along the Klamath River mm -hmm. area and the tricultural region there of the Karuk, uh, Yurok, and Hoopa people, and um, I've learned a lot from them. I've been mentored by them, kind of taken under their wing, as mm -hmm. it were. And um, so I asked them, would they think it would be appropriate to use redwood um, to render Leonard's likeness? And um, they gave me permission to do it. They said they thought it was a good idea. So all the skin parts that you see are uh, carved out of redwood. And then um, the clothes that he's wearing, which are ish, um, penitentiary issued clothing that he painted himself wearing. Um, they're rendered in foam. There's a, there's a metal structure inside, and then it's high density foam covered with, in epoxy. And oh, the sculpture wow. actually comes, you know, it breaks down to about 13 different elements, oh, wow. and then they're assembled. And, um, you know, actually it's a dream of mine to have this sculpture in San Jose, you know why? Because it's the San Jose State University, that sculpture there of Tommy Smith. Yes. And John. That's a work of mine as well. I did that artwork. I didn't know that. Oh, well, congratulations. So I well, would let's love get this to have to San Jose State. <laughs> I would love to have Leonard sitting on the grass next to John Carlos and 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 Oh, Thomas. I think we could make that happen. Actually, I can the, here's a photograph of John Carlos standing on the feet of oh, the Leonard Peltier statue. Oh, my goodness. Uh, John Carlos oh, is a great Oh, we we have to make that happen. I we would can love do that. that. I would love that. 
<laughs> Thank you for thing. what you've done here. This is just amazing, and congratulations. This is beautiful, and we'll make San Jose happen, okay? All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We'll be back. I'd like to introduce you to Anne Brigay. She's Danae. She is Kathy's mom. <laughs> Welcome, Anne. Hello. <laughs> and they're all there. They bead. Kathy and her mom, Anne bead. And this is some of the work they've done. Um, as you can see, I am a big fan. I have a lot of their earrings already. But um, she just gifted me this little orange t shirt. And of course, it represents all the children that were murdered at the boarding schools, and they've only discovered some of the bodies, but there's a lot out there, and they're finding more and more, and I guess we always knew they were there, but um, this represents the children. So she's gonna be making more of those. You can probably contact uh, Ann or Kathy, and they'll mm -hmm. and order some in the future, but she has other earrings and things she's made and they're just gorgeous just gorgeous but anyhow tell me a little bit about yourself uh, i'm dine now kaitinen shlon dot hachin ipashish chin shim shimados shizay atin not as ishi yolye a call nle dine trate e ya twin legs yolye pahas ato e na na nasha Good afternoon. I am Anne Begay. I just told you what my clans were. Uh, I am Kathy Peltier's uh, mother. What's that daughter? Okay. And uh, we make these jewelry to uh, help our travel expense for our travel expenses and the museum was kind enough to let us display some of our stuff and hopefully we do uh, have um, the majority of them sold today I started with the American Indian movement back in 1970 and became uh, one of the few top people who worked with uh, Dennis and Russell and Clyde and Vernon and all these other guys kept them in line. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was when I started. But I started here uh, in, in Los Angeles because my father was on relocation. So my mom uh, came out here with him, and the first time they asked me to be in a pageant, I said, cool you know you know didn't ask what it was didn't know what it was i was dressed up in navajo regalia and they had me welcome columbus over here <gasps> oh, and no. i was i oh, i no. had no history of it didn't know what was going on <laughs> didn't know who the hell he was sorry <laughs> didn't know who he was and I told my mom, I said, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. She goes, get out there and do Good it. For you. <laughs> I said, I'm not even the, the, the right tribe to have welcomed him. And I was so pissed. I was like four or fifth grade. I can't remember. Wow. But I remember that and I wasn't too happy with how it was presented. And, and then later on, I learned the true history of what Thanksgiving was about. And it's not a pretty story. No. Then I continued with the American Indian Movement, met uh, Leonard Crow Dog, and uh, worked with him and his uh, people. And, and then Kathy and I, when she was born, uh, her dad was in Canada, and he called us in Omaha, Nebraska, and he said, I heard you had the baby. He asked me, you know, boy or girl? I said, girl, did you name her? And I said, yes and told him her name was Kathy. Then we uh, we moved back to uh, Nebraska, I mean, uh, moved back to New Mexico with my daughter because that's where she was supposed to be born. And then uh, he got uh, extradited and was in Fargo, South Dakota, Fargo, North Dakota, and he had us come up to um, the courthouse there in Fargo when he had his trial. 
and that's where he met his daughter for the very first time. Uh, went into one of these little rooms at the courthouse and I had her and I handed her to the security guard and the security guard handed him uh, her to the other security guard and uh, then finally got to get held by her dad. Oh. And it was like, boom, a, a, a quick turnaround. He just held her for a couple seconds and they brought, you know, took her, him, took her away from him and gave him back to me and said, you're just missed going back oh, down to the court. It? That oh. was it. And after that, we hadn't been able to see him until he was um, transferred to Leavenworth. And in Leavenworth, I got to work with the uh, Pelter Defense Committee and did call all kinds of things. I went to Europe to uh, speak with Amnesty International National Office in Stockholm and also uh, did a lot of uh, speaking engagement there also in Norway, uh, Denmark, uh, Italy, in Milan, and uh, uh, several other places. It's, it's been so long ago that I my memory is just like, hmm, what are you talking about now? I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been both activists for a long time. Uh, Your whole life, on, sounds yeah, like. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Been on the longest walk, did a lot of protests up in Washington, D.C., and different places. And it's just been a whirlwind, and finally, I'm s settling, and she's doing the speaking, that uh, you know, just doing all the things that I did, and I'm so happy because I'm tired. You passed the baton. <laughs> I did. I really did, and she is very well taught. I have pictures of her when she was just a tiny two years old, when she's at the Navajo loom, uh -huh. helping her great grandmother. I mean, she was just hitting it like this, yeah. you know. <laughs> and she's she's doing that, and I have a picture of her. And then a few years later, you see her again, and she's weaving. I mean, she's weaving a design wow. on the rug. And it's like, okay, I taught her well, and she cooked with my mom, so she knows a lot of the, how to make a lot of the traditional uh, mm -hmm. foods that we eat. And then with her uh, Lakota grandmothers up in South Dakota, they've been teaching her different things too about how to be a woman, how to do this, how to do that. And, and it's, just, it's just been really hard work for yeah, both of us yeah. to just having to listen to the elders and go forward with those teachings. And sometimes we don't get listened to. Sometimes they just look over us until they sing find out that that's Kathy Peltier and I'm Ann McGay because a lot of the times we just introduce ourselves as Kathy and Ann uh -huh. uh -huh. just to see how people would treat us and you know respect or not you know they don't know until after we uh -huh. tell them who we are or somebody uh -huh. says oh that's Ann McGay and Kathy Peltier and it's like whoa is that uh -huh. them we did that to them you know it's been it's, hard it's yeah, really been yeah. hard you know um People talk about walking the red road. Oh my God, that is so difficult. Especially when you're trying to avoid all kinds of uh, stuff going on out on the on the outside and just walking that road and having blinders on. And it, it's hard, it's really hard. You know, people criticize you for just being like that. And I'm saying, hey, wait a minute. I live in both worlds, so I know how to do both, you know, both traditional and modernized. I say, yes, I'm colonized. So what? You know, I admit that I am because I exist, I exist in both worlds. Right, right. I am traditional. And a lot of people ask me, why don't you do this? I said, because I'm a staunch traditionalist. <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, well, we do this. And I see my Navajo people, the young kids. Oh my gosh, they they do some of the things that I was told that you couldn't do. Uh -huh. Don't do that because it's because of this. Don't do that because of that. And a lot of those kids, they say, well, that's just old fashioned. This is the 21st century. I said, okay. But the culture stays the same. It doesn't yeah, change. Yeah, it doesn't change. Uh -huh. It does not change. As long as there's someone 
moving it forward. Mm -hmm. As long as that person is moving it forward, it will never change. I mean, this, this group can change all this over here, this group can change all that, but somehow or another, they merge back together. Yeah. And that's what I'm thankful for. How has the, um, over the years, have you seen support and then lack of support, or has it been pretty steady, or how would you describe that? Uh, lack of support, a lot of support. People don't know who he is. I mean, the people in Europe, they know him more than the, the, the younger, younger generation here. You talk about him, they look at you with a puzzled look and they say, who are you talking about? So you have to, we have to sit down with them and talk about or show them a website where they can learn on their own or... Should be taught in school. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of other things. But I've heard that so much, is that in Europe, there's more mm -hmm. respect and knowledge of Native people yes. than there is here. Yes. And also in Australia, we had so much people come up to us and say that how much they, you know, admire Leonard and how, how much he, they support him and and just free Leonard Peltier is all they say, you know. They, and I tell myself, I said, write him just a short note saying that you, uh, you're you thinking about him, you pray for him, and uh, you support him still, even after all these years. And they do. And he gets a ton of letters, but a lot of them are returned because uh, they're not on regular white paper with a, a white envelope and just ink, black or uh, blue ink written on them. They send all kinds of pictures oh, or yeah. you know, little stuff that you know they consider contraband but you know he knows that there are people out here that continue to support him and do things like this uh, Rigo and his uh, little statue and the exhibit in there is amazing I did not visualize that I mean down at the Mien Museum and over at um, the San Francisco Art Institute was a little downscale, but this one, I mean, it, it it's almost like a detailed history, huh? History of when he was uh, arrested in Canada in 1976 to different times. I mean, it's from 1976 to 2021, and every single year that's posted up there there's something happening it's like my gosh and then I look at the numbers and look at look at the, the the years all around and I think my god I can't believe this man has been in prison for that amount of time and it's like 44 years and he's 77 today and it's just it's just sad it is sad I mean who else do they do that to well, some of the, a few of the Black, Pan, uh, the Black Panthers, but a lot of them are being freed, and he's the only one that's still there. Well, thank you, Anne, for being here. I thank you for being here with us. This is beautiful. <laughs> We're gonna bring you to San Jose somehow, some way. We'll do it. Okay. <laughs> yes, that would be great. Yes. Um, and they have beautiful earrings. Don't forget to go on the site and. Uh, it's Kathy's mm -hmm. uh, website. I mean, not website, but her uh, her Instagram. Facebook. Her Instagram. Yeah, we're gonna post Facebook. that so you can uh, also order earrings. And she usually posts pictures of them, and they're just gorgeous. So, if I don't buy them all, there might be some left for you. But then again, thank you for joining us on Native Voice TV. It's been wonderful and such an honor to be with our guest today. And if you don't know who Leonard Peltier is, you should learn. You need to learn who he is. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.